and Jeannie, the Colts have just under two weeks now till the start of the regular season. That means they've got just under two weeks now to get backup quarterback Jacoby Brissett ready to go as starting quarterback. Here's what the Colts GM had to say about Brissett stepping into that role. We're not going to ask Jacoby Brissett to be Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was a unique, unique player. But Jacoby Brissett is is a winning football player in this league, and he is an app. I think you hear what you, what Andrew said. Jacoby Brissett is a rare, rare leader. He is. He's a rare human being, man. That that locker room loves Jacoby Brissett. They love him. I think you saw it last year when you when you know as we went through the season. Um, this is a special guy, man. Um, and you know. I'm, I'm excited to watch him play. All right, Nick, what do you think? It was Chris Ballard just sort of selling us on Jacoby Brissett. Was he really, is he really all of those things? What are expectations now for the Colts? Well, listen, the Colts are devastated. And Jacoby Brissett, while he might be the best backup in football or formerly backup in football, I thought he was, he's obviously not Andrew Luck. But I don't think Chris Ballard's just selling things there. I think the Colts can, and I think they actually still will win the division. I don't think they are a Super Bowl contender anymore, as I thought they were. I thought the Chiefs, the Patriots, and the Colts were clearly the three best teams in the AFC going into the season. They take a, they are remove themselves from that group. But this is a team that over the final 10 weeks last year had the number one defense in football, had the number one offensive line in football. Those are not because of Andrew Luck. He, he helps the offensive line. He can help the defense by extending drives, but that's because of the roster they were building. This offseason, they didn't go out and spend a ton of money in free agency, but they did acquire Justin Houston. They had all those second round picks that they added to the roster. They add Paris Campbell. And I thought Jacoby, the situation he was in when we saw him in 2017, he was acquired on September 2nd. He played in week one. He started week two. That is, he's learning a totally new playbook, learning a new roster. He now has been under Frank Reich as long as Reich's been there. He got the entire offseason essentially as the starter because Luck's been dealing with this calf strain for so long. And that division to me is incredibly winnable. The Texans just lost their starting running back and they still don't have an offensive line. The Titans offense, which has lost Matt LaFleur this offseason, seems to be a mess. I'm not sure who the best quarterback on that roster is. And then there's the Jags, who if they can get back to the defense they had a couple years ago with Nick Foles, could be an interesting team. But I like the Colts. I, I think the Colts can win nine games and I don't see anyone else in that division winning 10 so they're not the same team obviously but I still think they can I still think they will win the AFC South yeah th there are a lot of things to like about the Colts and then defensively mm -hmm. it's one of them one of the main things and he, you mentioned the draft picks there's seven draft picks that, uh, on defense this year so they drafted so hopefully that influx of young talent will, will continue to build on on what they've done and offensively, one of the reasons you like Jacoby Brissett so much or, or you like that quarterback situation so much is if Andrew Luck got hurt, you did have the chance to go to Jacoby Brissett. And we've seen so many teams who get deep into the playoff hunt, their starter gets hurt, you know, the backup can't do it. And then we've seen the reverse of that with, with Philadelphia. But now with Jacoby being the starter, it's a, it's a radically different equation. And we can look at that first season and, and, and he didn't have much lead time. The numbers have not been impressive for, for him uh, in, in terms of whether it's... Passer rating. Uh, yeah, take your pick. Almost wins. any numbers below league average. It's below league average. Now, you're hoping, because of what Chris Ballard said and because of what you hear from other guys, that he does have that leadership. He does have that, that, um, that work ethic, that drive, those things, those intangibles that we talk about all the time that's going to help him continue to grow in the system. As a team, as a whole, as an organization, they're doing so many positive things. This is just such a devastating blow so late in the process. It's going to be interesting to see how they recover. I, I love to hear the, the confirmation with the general manager, Chris Ballard, what he said. And it was a confirmation with my good friend Bill Parcells talked about Jacoby. He's been mentoring him for approximately five years. Now, I saw Jacoby in high school because he's from South Florida, went to a big-time high school, Dwyer, was a five-star quarterback there and also a two-sport star on their basketball team. So I had heard about his leadership. He signs go to University of Florida. It doesn't work out there. He goes to NC State. Had been hearing great things about him behind the scenes there in New England before he was traded. So I would expect him to be better than your average quarterback. And the reason why, that offensive line, that wasn't there before when he was playing, and also the wide receiving core. They got 
got Funches to be opposite of T.Y. Hilton. They brought Eric Ebron over, had a Pro Bowl season last year, coming over from Detroit. He's fulfilling his potential as a first-round pick. And they also have Paris Campbell, the second pick from uh, the, the Buckeyes, second-round pick from the Buckeyes, that will be playing for them. So he has more tools now than he had before and with a good defense. So I think that they, I like your, them picking them for the division. I was thinking about Jacksonville, but if you think about roster, top to bottom, I like the Colts roster more so than I like anyone else in that division. Well, I mean, they went from 15 to 1 odds to win to 30 to 1. Oh, I don't think they can win the Super Bowl. Like, they, to me, when you when but you that lose, seems like a big drop-off. Absolutely. I, to me, there is, so there's different ways to evaluate teams in this league. And there is, the barrier for entry of winning a division that doesn't have a great team in it is one level. The barrier of entry of winning three or four playoff games, all of which will be against good teams yes. or great teams, is drastically different. So you can be a team that yeah, can that's why the odds reflect that. And so you can be a viable contender to win your division or to even maybe win 11 games and still have almost no shot at winning the Super Bowl because of who you have to go through en route to getting there. Okay, so tell me what Jacoby Brissett has to do to get better. What, what do you want to see from him? Where, where is he not a complete starting quarterback in this league? Well, there's a couple things in the sample sizes from earlier. He's got to get the ball out of his hands quicker, Quick. which Indy was doing with since Frank Wright has taken over and Andrew Luck came back. He's also got to be more accurate with the football. And that means like when you're getting zone, I want the ball on the right number. Typically inside zone, the ball's going to be coming my inside so the receiver can react to the defender. Man to man, put the ball in front of people so they can get catch and run. And when they blitz you, which they're going to do, man, you got to take the heart out of the defense by taking those big shots down the field and hitting them with a higher percentage. Those three things right there, and it would lead to him being, which I believe is above average NFL quarterback as a starter. To me, the most important thing is, is the, the level of sacks that he took. And, and we talked yep. about this with Andrew Luck. When you play a young player, when you play an inexperienced guy, they're going to take sacks at a higher rate than an older guy because they don't really understand the cost-benefit ratio. So now here we are two years down the track. What, what type of decision-making is he going to have mm -hmm. when, when it comes, to, comes time to, to, to that? And the O-line has gotten better. The running game has gotten better. The supporting cast has gotten better. So I'd want to see a, a significant amount of progress in the amount of times that, that he's either being hit or being sacked because the next step is is much further back. You mentioned 2017 that he didn't have many things where he was above league average that he was very good at. The one part of his game that statistically, even with the supporting cast, lack of offensive line, was excellent in 2017 was his completion percentage and success rate on deep passes. He had that. Now, T.Y. Hilton probably deserves a lot of credit for that. He's been great at that his whole career, but he was very good at that aspect. Where he was the worst in the league was sack percentage. 10% of his dropbacks ended in a sack. Some of that was the offensive line. But a lot of that was how long he held on to the football. I think Bill Barnwell pointed out he held on to the ball one of the highest rates of any quarterback in the league. So the offensive line will be better. He's got to get the ball out quicker. That deep pass, if that's still there, because Paris Campbell helps with that, obviously T.Y. Hilton is still there as well. I think he can be a middling quarterback. And in that division, there's only one, to me, excellent quarterback. That's Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson. And he's going to be running for his life the whole season. Mm -hmm. So I, if he, they were in a different division, I'd feel differently in the AFC South. I think they can still win it. All right, let's take a break. Coming up, were fans out of line booing Andrew Locke when they heard the news that he had retired? That's next on First Things First. Ultra for beef.